What's up, Ladder fam? Man, I hope everything is going great your way. Listen, we have some exciting news. My ebook just dropped uh, last week, and I'm so excited for you to get your hands on a copy. I think that this is just going to be one of those things that you can refer back to a guide, a playbook, a manual that you could just increase your foundation in leadership. I really do believe that Christian leaders should be disruptive, especially in this world today, so that you can have the boldness and go after things that God has called you to go after. And listen, I am so excited about today. Over the next couple of weeks, we're actually going to be reviewing things uh, from the book. So I definitely want you to get you a copy. Uh, we're going to be going page by page and literally just tackling some of the things uh, that we normally uh, don't really get a huge explanation on. Sometimes uh, things can be in a gray, but hopefully things were explained well in a book. But I definitely just want to take it a step further. I want to go deeper into the aspects of leadership so that you can have a deeper understanding of of how God is calling you to lead. Listen, if you believe that this is something that somebody else would be highly, would, this would be highly beneficial to, I just want to encourage you, tell them, go share this. Uh, I want you to like, comment, and subscribe. Help your boy out. Listen, I am putting a call to action on this. Uh, I definitely want to get this word out, and you are going to be the ones that are really going to just help me go after the things that God has placed on the inside of me. And I just pray, I, I just pray that the thing that God has ignited on the inside of me, just gives you flame, just give you a spark um, so that you can say yes to your assignment as well. Because listen, there is room for you. I, I want to just dispel anything that the trick of the enemy could use to try to, to try to tell you or to try to put a thought in your mind that there's not enough room from you, that this is a, a, a clouded uh, or a crowded um space that you're in. No, 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 no. God put things on the inside of you that uniquely designed, wonderfully and marvelously made. You were meant to stand out. But the only way that you are going to be able to stand out is if you be the person that ha you have been called to be. So listen, you were designed to leave. Listen, go get your hands on a copy of the book. I have it right now on my iPad and I'm going to be reading from it. And so I just want to, I just hope that you enjoy today's message as we go a little bit deeper into identity. Um, I believe that this is such an important topic, especially um, in the world that we are living in today. And I hope that, you know, you understand not only uh, you understand, but just keep just get a deeper understanding of what you, how God has identified you and what that identification means for other people. I do not believe in a purpose that is called to serve you. I do not believe in a purpose that is called for you to only benefit from. Matter of fact, there are certain things you should reevaluate if the only thing you feel like you're called to do only serve you, gratifies you, and it does not make you a conduit in which God can use to increase the love, increase the blessing, increase certain things in your life so that it can flow through you so that you can be a conduit of him, so that you can be an example of who God is. Because I really do believe that the closest things that some people or the closest thing that people have to see God is through you. What does Jesus look like if he was an employee at your job? What does Jesus look like if he was a barista at the coffee shop? What does Jesus look like when he was outside, if he was outside waving hello? I want to just alarm you. That's you. And so I just want to highly encourage you to just dig deeper into your identification. And I hope that this message today just gives you a little bit more clarity on how God is calling you and what he has identified on the inside of you. Come on, let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for what you're doing in the hearts and lives of your people. I'm so excited because you have created a great 
you have done a great job of just designing us, creating us, and you have given us the ability to lead from a different place, not because we're better than, we're just different from. And so, God, we thank you because the uncommon things, the miracles, the signs, and the wonders is going to happen in our lives just because of us simply saying, yes, God, we cannot wait. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Listen, I want to talk to you about true identity. And this is probably one of the uh, most paramount words um, that I really do believe you are going to hear, especially when it comes to leadership, because there are two types of identifications, especially when it comes to people, when you are when you are not clear on the thing that God has called you to be. Number one is being misidentified. And then number two is being unidentified. Now, I want to walk through those two scenarios, those two points, because I really do believe it's important for us to be clear on how we were called or how we were meant to be identified. So then number one is being misidentified. To be misidentified is that you use external things to give you identity, external things such as status, money, power, relationship, certain things, cars, houses, tangible things, and some, and sometimes intangible things. It's the validation you get from others, the appreciation you get from others, sometimes give us identity. And it really doesn't give us clear identity. It misidentifies us. It misidentifies us. In other words, we go after those things Instead of going after a clear understanding of who we are at our core, we'll then misperceive who we are as a person if those things are missing. That's misidentification. There are a lot of people who are allowing the things that are around them to give them identity. You will be shocked at how many people feel like their jobs and a position in their jobs that gives them um, that gives them security in the person that they are. And it's up until the point when they lose their job that they are so down on themselves, they don't really know who they are, how they are, or what they were called to do upon this earth because they lost one thing. But I just want to let you know that there are certain things in your life that God wants you to enlighten or that he wants you to be enlightened about. And if you're not clear on the person that God has called you to be, then you will always look outside of yourself to confirm what God has already given you. And so it is so important for us to be identified and not misidentified because everything about this world is changing. There's always going to be a new trend. There's always going to be something new to learn. There's always going to be a new law that 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 is completely abnormal to what is currently or to what historical history has shown us or what uh, the history has shown us. And so we have to be mindful of really pursuing what we were called to be, or we will be distracted by going after things that were never meant for us to go after. We will be distracted by going after individuals where we see, well, this worked for them, so it may work for me. And God doesn't want you to live in a maybe. God does not want you to live in the uncertainty. He wants you to be so confident in the person that he has called you to be that you cannot be misidentified by things. You can only be encouraged that God is doing something greater on the inside of you so that you can go after the things that God has called you to go after so that you can be bold in the things that God has called you to be bold after. Now, this requires intimacy. This requires another level of depthness. This requires you to go deeper into the things that God has called out of you. Now, this enlightens or this heightens your capacity to hear from God. And it is so important for you to hear from God so that you can be mindful of the things that he is telling you so that you can live from that place. 
That is the place we want to live from. We want to live from the place that God has confirmed, that God has affirmed, that God has given us. And we can only live from that place when we are confident in the things that he is telling us. So we have to be mindful that intimacy gives a relate gives us a relationship that we are confident in the things that God is pouring on the inside of us. But we have to we cannot stop there because intimacy we control the intimacy. In other words, we control the depthness, but God determines the scope. We are living in a world that's completely going after the scope. And that's why we have shallow living people, people who do not live from the core, but they live from an area of shallowness in their life. My pastor, he the one who told me that, that there are a lot of people who will go after the scope instead of going after the depthness. And what God is trying to do is he is trying to create a depthness on the inside of us so that he can give us the scope. God will determine how far you can go. You determine how deep you are willing to go. And so I think this is so important, especially when God is trying to do something different on the inside of our lives. But we do not want to isolate ourselves from the complete transformation that will happen. So that's one end of it. So it's the misidentification. That's one end of it. But the other end is to be unidentified. Man, and this is a worse, this is probably one of the worst things that you can be in because you just really don't know who you are. You don't really understand what is going on on the inside of you. And this is where cycles begin to happen in your life. Because when you are not confident and intentional about the doing, about living out the things that God has placed on the inside of you, uh, on the inside of you, then you will always revert back to what you are comfort, comfortable with. I want to say that line all over again because I really do believe that this is so important. When you are unidentified, you will always be insecure about the person you are. And then cycles begin to enter in your life. And the cycle happens when you start reverting back to things that you are comfortable with. And we have to understand that comfort and calling cannot coexist. So the calling that God is pulling you towards, comfort says come back here because it's not, we're not fulfilled. We're not familiar with the newness. We're not familiar with what is trying to change on the inside of us. And so when you are unidentified, you are not stepping into your calling, but you are just going, repeating life over and over into a cycle. I remember I was at the gym and I was working out and I literally was doing my cycle of, of workouts. It was just one of those things where I was motivated in the beginning, but because I had did this routine over and over again, the motivation slowed down towards the end. And it was just, I remember this like it was yesterday. I was pushing um, chest press at the gym and the coach, one of the coaches comes over to me and he said, hey, listen, man, the next time you do this, I want you to do it this way. And I was like, okay, okay, cool. And in the back of my mind, I didn't think nothing of it, but I wanted to try it out because it was something different. It was something that changed about the cycle that I was in. So I started doing this and in uh, like an instant feeling, I started feeling a change. I started feeling my muscles getting rejuvenated all over again. The motivation kicked back up again. The sweat started pouring out of my pores. And I began to realize that there are certain things that we are living in our cycle that we have to rely on or be available with or be available to the one thing that needs to change. Listen, your cycle is because you won't change the one thing. And that one thing sometimes are things that we have to get rid of. And let me tell you something, leaders. There are things that we have to sacrifice that we really don't want to sacrifice. There are certain things that God is asking us to give that we do not want to give. But I want to encourage you today that God will never ask you to give up something that he is not willing to put something greater, bigger, and stronger in your hands. So I do not want you to walk around unidentified because unidentified will keep you in a cycle of comfort and comfort cannot coexist with calling. 
but listen, to be on. To be identified, to be a leader who has identity, to understand what God has called you to do, gives you permission to step out on faith and actually be guided by grace and not your own ability. A leader who is walking in their purpose understands that there is no weapon formed against them shall be able to prosper. Matter of fact, God will send some things your way that will sometimes shock you and surprise you and throw you off guard, but those failed expectations, those disappointments, or the hurt are the things that pull you closer and reveal to you what is on the inside of you, and it helps you from going out into the world to be identified with something that you were never created to be identified with. Listen, when you go deeper in understanding what you have been called to do, then you live your life on purpose. And purpose is simply a reason why something exists. And when you live from that place, you don't waste time with things things that do not align with the purpose that God has placed on your life. So this is so important, even when you are living from a place of identification, because then it gives you permission to create boundaries. The boundaries protect the gift that God has given you. Your boundaries give you permission to say no. Your boundaries give you permission to say yes to God things instead of good things, God opportunities instead of good opportunities. You want to live your life in such an intentional way that it gives you the authority to walk past what others have to go step by step, by step to do. God wants you to operate in a ministry of quantum leaps. He wants you to take quantum steps towards him, but this requires you to trust in him with all your heart and watch this lean not upon your own, on your own understanding because the things are the thing the things that God wants to do in your life cannot be quantified by people it cannot be reasoned by people and you cannot put it in a box neither can you tell others what you were able to do because once you start operating in the gift that God has called on the inside of you it gives you power to move in the way in a way that dis- distracts that that not distracts but disturbs people who are comfort or people who are comfortable it gives you permission to disturb people who want to live a convenient life it gives you permission to disturb some of the things that a lot of people want to sit in But I believe that you are going to lead a generation that is not only going to that is not only going to be committed to the vision that God has given you, but is also going to be committed to the person that they should identify with when God is over their life. Listen, this is so important because this will prevent burnout and burnout only happens when you're not doing enough of what you were called to do. So everything that is not a part of your calling is a distraction. So we have to be mindful of the things that God is doing on the inside of us. But we also got to give ourselves time, patience, and understanding so that we can go deeper in what God is calling us to do so that he can control the scope and how far we go. Listen, your obedience is going to change the things or some things that you were supposed to stumble on that, that you did not stumble on because you had God on your side. Intimacy, intimacy gives you the ability to hear, but obedience, oh my God, obedience gives you the opportunity to see the things that you always knew God had in store for you. Listen, I am so excited about what is coming through in the next couple of weeks. I want you to stay in tune. Again, like, comment, and subscribe on the content below. I definitely want to get this message out. And I hope that if you heard something or if you are listening to something that you feel like um, I can go deeper in, or even if you have questions, please put it in the comment section. I'm going to be there. We're going to be talking about design to lead the next couple of weeks. And I, I want you to miss an episode. I do not want you to miss an episode because I really do believe that this is for you. All right. I will see you next time. And until then, may the Lord bless you, may he keep you, may his face 
shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you peace forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen.